Resuming question number three, part B. Now complete the table for g of x equals 2, 2 over x plus 3 for values of x between minus 3.5 and minus 0 0.5 and then between the values of 0 0.5 and 2.5. Now they have a disjointed range here because it has, there's an x in the denominator so there's certain values that this function cannot take. So the x value cannot be 0, so then you have 2 divided by 0, 0 will be the denominator, it will be undefined. That's why you have a disjointed graph and this is shaded. You can't have x equals 0 in here. Anyway, so first of all, we've got to complete the table. We've got to divide 2 by minus 2, which gives you minus 1. Minus 1 plus 3 is 2. We've got to divide 2 by minus a half. 2 divided by minus half is like 2 times minus 2, which will give you minus 4, minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. And then you've got this one missing. 2 divided by 2, which is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. There's no really need for a calculator. You can check to make sure in case you made a mistake. On the grid opposite, which is the grid we saw in part A, draw the graph of y equals g x. So we'll go to the other page. And there's something I prepared earlier. I have a table here. All right, and we're told to plot these points. That's minus 3.5 and 2.4. I'm going to do something here to make sure that this thing doesn't go walkabouts. All right, so now minus 3.5 and 2.4. So minus 3.5 is right at the end, and 2.4. That way. Minus 2.5 and 2.4. Well, here's here's 2.2. That's 2.4. And that's minus 3.5. So we're right over here. Oops. Two. Should, should be just a small dot and circle. Okay. That's 2.4. Dot circle. Then we got minus 3 and 2.3. See that's what it says. Minus 3 and 2.3. Minus 3 and 2.3. So 2.3 is over here. 2.3, just slightly lower. Well, position 2.3, 2.4. Minus 2 and 2 goes right to this point here. We move this to get rid of this line. We don't need it anymore. Okay, minus 2 and 2, I can get rid of this one as well. Okay, and then we got um, minus 1 and plus 1. Okay, minus 1 and plus 1. Which is right there. Minus 1 and 1. Then we got minus 0 0.5 and minus 1. It's going to switch down below the encounter stuff. So, Minus 0 0.5, that's, that's 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and minus 1, which is going to be over here. Then we got, um, it's, it stops there. We'll continue going down, but we'll never touch the x-axis. Then it goes on to the other side over here. So 0 0.5 and 7. 0 point, and 7, sorry. So 0 0.5 and 7. So we're going to go all the way up here. 0 0.5 is... One, two, three, four, five, and seven. Right there. We got one and five. Move the table out of the way. Right there now. Okay, one and five. It's over here. And we've got two and four. It's over there. Then we've got two point five. And 3.8, now that's 2.5. And 3.8, that's 3, 2, 3.4, 3 plus 3.8. So let, let's just try and do this table that way down here somewhere. 
I'll get rid of the table down here now. Away. Okay, so now I've got to draw a graph. Smooth the lines through these points. Now, I'm not going to join this side to that side. Okay, I know this graph is going to go something like as follows. I'll go through these points. It's very difficult for me to draw it with this tool that I have there. It's going to go something like this. Oops. Not so good. I'll fix that later. Not, really, not easy with this thing. This is what it's supposed to be like. Well, what is it? I'm not going to use it then. Start again, sorry. And okay, so we do something like this. Okay, it's not perfect. Not difficult with this drawing tool I have. So I'll try and fix that bit. Too many lines there. Let's say. Okay, so then it would continue going that same kind of. Ways so as with this. It's not they're not perfect, but I tried my best. This is y is equal to g of x. It's a positive part, that's a negative part. Okay. So now the next part of the question says on the other side, okay, the next part of the question says um, use your graph to solve fx equal g of x. Okay, now when does f of x equal g of x? Okay, f of x equal g of x, but they share the same point where they share the same x and y values. Now f of x equals g of x, you can see at this point here where they intersect. Okay, so if I find the point where they intersect, which is one of the points just here, one of the points is right there. Okay. I'm going to Okay, and there's another point, which is over here. Almost the same as that what we found earlier. Okay. So and this point here. So those are the two points where the curve, the curve and that line intersect. They don't intersect any other place. So the two solutions to f x equals x. One of them is at one point, say one point eight five. That's probably in there. One point eight five. Okay, one point eight five. So you've got two spaces there. It matches with our two intersections. And the other one is at negative. Like three point three you could say there. Negative three point three around that same value. Okay. Negative three point three. Okay. Now it says find G F minus two. Now, G of F minus two. Now for F minus two, I have no choice but to use a graph, because I don't have an equation for it. So we already found what f minus 2 was. f minus 2 gave us a value of 10. Right? So I know that f minus 2 is equal to 10. We go back to the question. f minus 2, you, you've got to find g f minus 2. g f minus 2. That means you've got to find what g f is. We've got to find what f minus 2 is. For. Now f minus 2 is equal to 10. Okay? And now we've got to find g of f minus 2, which is g of 10. Now g of 10. If we try to use a graph even, we won't be able to because we need to find what, what, G, what the value of y is when x is 10. 
We can't use the block. And the question doesn't tell us to use the block anyhow. The question just says, fine. Then this question says, use your block to solve. Okay? Which, uh, you know, you had no choice actually, because there was no, you didn't have, you don't know what the function f is, so you have to use the block. For g of, g of 10, you have no choice except to use the equation, because uh, the graph doesn't go up to 10. But you have the equation of function g, so it means basically substitute 10 into this function q. So it's 2 over 10 plus 3, which is, that's going to give you 0 0.2. 3.2. Okay, so that's um, the answer for g of f minus 2. Okay, then it says find the inverse function of g5. Okay, so find the inverse function g5. Again, you can't use a graph. Okay, because there's a go to 5. Okay, so uh, the inverse function actually is a graph to Actually, you could use a graph, but you don't need to. It's better for you to use the the, the equation, because it doesn't say use the graph, so you just fine. Okay, so we know that g of x is equal to 2 over x plus 3. All right, that's given in the question. That's g of x. We're going to find the inverse of g five. Now, there's two ways to do this. One way is to find the inverse function, and then make uh, substitute x equals 5 into the inverse function, and you found the answer. Um, the shorter way is to say, okay, think about what I would do if you said g5 without the inverse. I would put the 5 instead of the x. So you'd put x equals 5, that was the case. So x equals sorry, 5, that was the case. Okay? But as it says the inverse of gx, you say, no, I'm going to put y equals 5 instead. So I'm going to say 2 over x plus 3 is equal to 5. So 2 over x is equal to 5 minus 3. So 2 over x is equal to 2. So we're going to have x equals 1. Uh, multiply x equals 1. So the answer is 1. Inverse of g5 is 1. And we can even solve this using the graph if we wish to, although it probably won't be as accurate, especially with my drawing of the graph, with this strange pen. So you got g minus 1 of 5. That was the question. Okay. That's what we have to do. Inverse of g of 5, we have to find what it was. Now, as I mentioned before, normally, if, it, if the question said find g5, graphically, we would draw the line x equals 5, which you can't get because it's out of the range. But because it says inverse, we have to draw y equals 5 instead, which we can do. Okay, and y equals 5 is this line that goes across there. And you can see, where does it hit the function g? It hits the function g at 1. Okay, whoops. It hits the function g at 1. At 1. Right? So we can see that this is equal to 1. Graphically as well as algebraic. Okay, so there, we wrap up that question. I hope that's clear for you. Could I say?